audiophile tube rolling for dummies. And in this case, I am the dummy or the beginner. And so this video will be oriented towards helping you guys that, like me, are just getting started into this part of the hi-fi uh, hobby, the enjoyment. Uh, and it's a lot of fun, but I'm going to give some information about the tubes, about changing the tubes, where to get the tubes, uh, what the differences are, and that kind of thing. And uh, also in the picture here is my Vincent uh, hybrid integrated stereo amp, which has tubes in it. And uh, lastly, I'll get a little bit of that and changing the tubes in that amp and my personal what I uh, think they sound like. Okay, why do we want tubes? Well, uh, the word that popped up here was sounds better. Nope, that's a real tricky word. We don't know what better means. Is that from a technical measurement from what? I think what we want, we want a sound that's more enjoyable to our ears and more enjoyable in our system and in our room. All those things make a difference. And uh, you can change a tube in, uh, depending on the room. You might not hear any difference at all. Very subjective and uh, so it gets a lot of controversy when you get into this. Uh, one of the things people talk about, they use these words, which uh, we have to experience them to really learn kind of what people are talking about. And I'm doing that. I've been doing that. But I use the word sparkly. They use that here. A real common word is warm. We hear that in all of our amplifier speakers people talk about their warm sounding it's a little bit hard to know exactly what that means holographic maybe more top end maybe more uh, low end and so forth so uh, all of those things come into play and i'll tell you right now my amp came with uh, new manufactured chinese tubes and I'll get a little more in detail in that. I like the sound of them. And right now it has top quality new old stock tubes in it. And it changed the sound. And it didn't take any special listening to hear it. Uh, it sounds different. And I like it the way it sounds now too. But we'll get into that more in just a minute. So my experience is, is that about 1962, I built a Heathkit, Heathkit integrated amp, which was all tube, and I don't remember much about that. And back during that time period, I was an electronics technician in the military. I went to the electronics schools, made, uh, theory schools, maintenance schools, repair schools, and almost everything back then that we worked on had tubes in it. But again, it's a completely different world now. And uh, I didn't do any research here, but I'm going to say probably uh, by the time we got to 1970, there wouldn't have been a tube in much hi-fi equipment unless it was a specialty product or maybe something for the audiophile market. Uh, so one of the things about tubes, we have newly manufactured tubes and the general consensus in the hi-fi community seems to be that maybe those aren't going to sound as good as the new old stock tubes. And of course, the people that say that are the people probably selling new old stock tubes. So they want us to sell those tubes, which are hard to get, which they have to kind of be an expert to find them and uh, then uh, maybe uh, they make a little more on them. I don't know anything about that part of it, but when it comes to getting tubes, we can get the new tubes or we can get new old stock tubes. I'm not going to take the tubes out of the boxes here. You can see what tubes look like every place, but there are several things here that is important. 
and uh, laying on top of my dock here, here are the 12AU7, 12AX7. These are the new old stock, super high quality tubes that are in this Vincent right now. Here are 12AU7 and 12AX7 uh, made by, these are new manufacturer made in Slovakia by JJ Electronics. And here is uh, what used to be, I think, a British tube, the Gold Lion. These are 12AX7s, and they're new manufacturer in Russia. And uh, so when we're looking at these, uh, and what you newbies like me, I think, have to be careful. Yeah, you can go on eBay, you can find these tubes for a few dollars. But the condition, and I don't mean just whether they're new or whether they're old and beat up or not makes a huge difference when we're using them in hi-fi in audio file equipment now a lot of the youtube tube rolling videos where they talk about the tubes like i'm going to talk about a little bit here almost all of the ones that i've been able to find are related to guitar amplifiers and uh, they're getting a different kind of sound and I think a lot of times uh, they may want the dirty sound so the tube that's not pristine may be the one that they prefer but when we're putting it in our high quality hi-fi system we want a tube that doesn't have any problems so we want a tube that's quiet a tube that has a low microphonics uh, we may want a tube that has higher gain and where the tubes are going in in pairs or maybe more We probably want them matched now. I've purchased tubes from two suppliers uh, And there is at least one other upscale audio uh, And tube depot. I've been happy with both of them these new old stock tubes I got from upscale audio these new manufactured tubes I got from uh, Tube Depot and service is good and uh, the thing that's really important here that uh, I'm, I'm going to show and relate to you and both of these places do it so when we go here's the 12AX7 Tongues Ram I'm not going to try to focus in but they have a label on here each one of these tubes is tested and graded and they're graded in uh, two or three different levels and uh, so for example these new gold lion 12 ax 7s made in russia i think the suggested retail price is 29.95 something like that about 30 dollars these tubes i think uh, i paid close to 50 dollars for well they are hand selected hand graded and hand match to be the best tubes that you can get in this manufacturer uh, that is the same thing with these tubes uh, they're all graded they all have a label on the side and upscale audio uh, they're all graded they have their own label put on them telling you what the grade is well this is important uh, if you're going to put it in a hi-fi and you also you maybe pay 10 or 20 or 30 dollars more for a tube You know, you're getting a quality tube. That's going to sound good in your system and uh, Millions of these tubes were manufactured and the new ones. They're making millions of them Well, but they're not all the same when you put it in hi-fi You want one is that has been hand selected through testing and listening that's going to provide you the best service so that's one of the things that you have to watch out for and uh, kind of lastly here is tubes require some break-in period so uh, I'm getting fairly uh, just getting experienced in that but uh, so they're going to sound different after they burn been burned in a little while over what they sound like when you first put them on yes you want to watch out where you get the tubes and uh, buying from ebay for example you can find cheap tubes and maybe they say they've been tested we don't know what that means but remember uh, whether 
it's new old stock or newly manufactured the guys that are selling these tubes are selling the best tubes they can get and once they went through and tested and them, graded them what do you think they do with all the ones that don't match up they're sold to somebody else or they're on eBay for a lower price so yeah if you want to mess around uh, you can probably save a couple dollars but if you just want to be sure you're getting some good tubes and you don't have to worry about that pay a couple extra dollars and buy them from these few places that guarantee what they're selling uh, you probably don't want to get them off of ebay now if you're putting them in a guitar amp maybe doesn't matter one of the things i thought kind of funny uh, they tell you to use white cotton gloves that you don't want to leave your fingerprint oil on the tube i don't remember what they said about that but uh, you know back in the old days when i was repairing electronics in the military we didn't wear any gloves of course we had lots of tubes and uh, none of that was an issue the thing that i'm talking about here is just preamp phono preamp tubes like the two most common 12 ax7 12 au7 power tubes used for the power output part of an amplifier that is a completely different situation uh, most of the same kind of things apply to it but uh, i'm not talking about that specifically here at all and one of the things on the new tubes i thought was interesting so for example these best quality tongues ram 12 ax7 those were about a hundred and fifty dollars each uh yep we're all crazy these radio technique 12 au7 these tubes are all from like the early 60s these were a little less than a hundred dollars a piece okay so here jj electronics here's the same complement we have right here for 12 au7 212AX7, the best quality ones, hand selected of these you can get. So here's $700, here's about $170. These are new manufactured. Maybe we'll like them best. Now, I have not tried these tubes yet. I don't know what they're going to sound like, but here I have a recent magazine review of the Zesto Audio Andros Tessero Phono Stage. This phono stage uses 12AX7, 12AU7, uh, and this phono stage is $12,000. Okay, so $12,000, well, they can't use new old stock tubes. There's not enough, would be too much trouble. So that unit is designed around these JJ Electronics tubes, and that's reading this article is what made me say, okay, if those newly manufactured tubes are good enough for a $12,000 phono preamp, they got to be good enough in my system. I haven't tried them yet, but I'm going to try them. So that's just one of the things that uh, I thought was a little bit interesting and one of the kind of things that comes into play here. And... Uh, this adds a little bit of fun to it, uh, and uh, I'm enjoying it. Here is my new, almost new, I've had it uh, for about a month or so now, Vincent SV700 Hybrid Integrated Stereo Amp. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the tube rolling in it, and a little bit about the tubes, and a little bit about the Vincent. Now, first off, look at the size of that toroid transformer in there and uh chinese manufactured uses a lot of high quality japanese made parts and uh i just been tickled to death with it just a couple things for you guys that get this the top is held down with some little hex screws uh, allen wrench screws and uh, me being an old dummy although i should have known better uh this is metric not us and so of course the first thing i did i have allen wrenches in the toolbox didn't think about being metric well about half of them weren't super tight so they come out the other half the screw heads are soft 
and soon as you make one little turn inside that screw head where it didn't quite grab a hold, you've stripped those out. So I ended up having to drill uh, some of the screws. That's okay, doesn't matter to me. I'm not shipping it around. Uh, I got half of the screws to hold it down when I want to put the top on. And one of the other little aspects that you need to know here is, I hope the camera focuses on this, but here's a little spring steel clip and each one of these tubes had this spring clip on it and they're hooked in to the circuit board and uh, you have to be real careful these keep tubes from coming loose when they're being shipped around the world keeps the tubes tight i don't think you need them i'm not going to bother to put them back on but in the process of getting this off of one of the little tits at the end of the tube that tube must have been a little fragile and the top just popped right off. So the tubes that come with it, uh, I destroyed one of them in the process of getting these things off. So that's something to watch for. Now here is a 12AX7s. Here are the two 12AU7s. The 12AX7s are primarily the first part of the input. The 12AU7s are the output then where it goes into the power amplifier and i've read a lot of stuff that says the first two tubes those 12 ax7s give you the most effect when you're tube rolling and so one of the things probably instead of changing too many tubes at once just finding the 12 ax7s that you like first might be better but i took the tubes out that was in there and i put the tubes that you see over there in the real high quality and uh, so what was my little experience there well the chinese tubes i like the way they sounded and i'm going to use two words sparkly hard to know exactly what that means it could mean a little tube distortion a little tube noise these are the kind of things that you have to experiment with this enough to where you learn how to try to describe the differences when you listen to these things. Well, these high-end new old stock tubes I got in there, what's the difference? I wrote down here sharper sound, cleaner sound, really clean sound, almost pure, uh, more detailed, and I think slightly less holographic. And when those Chinese tubes were in there, I was particularly enjoying the additional three-dimensionality of it. And uh, so I'm going to be playing with this a little bit and getting some different sounds. But with this particular amp, going to be relatively minimal tube rolling. I'm going to find something I like, and I'm probably going to leave it. Why is that? Well, these tubes are mounted on a printed circuit board which is raised above other stuff under there, and they have nice uh, ceramic uh, tube sockets that they're into, and so there's no problem there. But the people that do a lot of tube rolling, you want uh, where the tubes are, you want those sockets mounted to a steel plate where when you're pulling in, out the tubes and pressing them back in, it takes a little bit of pressure that uh, you have a real firm surface here, I'm not worried about it, but you see just the tiniest little bit of flex when you put those tubes in or take those tubes out. So I'm not going to be changing the tubes all of the time here until at some point you flex that enough that you crack a trace or something on the circuit board. And again, I don't expect that to be an issue here, and I didn't buy it to spend the rest of my time swapping tubes out, I want to find the tubes that I think sound the best to my ears in my room. And my main interest in all of this might make you wonder seeing a video like this, but my primary interest is listening to music. And I want to get this thing set up to, uh, to my taste. And then let's get back to listening to music.